Hello guys, it's Shrimp Time here and we got yet another interesting video about shrimp keeping. In today's episode I will show you how you shouldn't keep your shrimps, what you shouldn't do with your tank and even though if you do all of that things, sometimes you can be surprised by the results. So we got a video about upkeep of the shrimp tank and to be totally precise about the lack of upkeep of the shrimp tank. Before we start, I would like to thank, uh, say big thank you to all the subscribers of my channel and your active participation in this channel. As you can see, we got a little pack of uh, Galaxy Tiger Pintos. This is a very interesting shrimp with uh, with a pattern a bit between the galaxy uh, shrimp and a bit between the uh, pinto shrimp, exactly nanashi shrimps. We got the stripes on the back which are characteristic for the nanashi and we got a spots on the heads which are characteristic for galaxy fish bones, maybe even for boas. And this tank is the worst tank if I had to say about upkeeping a tank. I almost didn't do a thing with this tank. I only added the arrow water which was evaporating from the tank and made a water change once a month, once two months. And after all of those problems, all of my wrong behaviors, if we are speaking about a shrimp tank, I've got this type of results. I got a tank with almost no deaths, I got a tank with active shrimps, and I've got a tank with a lot of baby shrimps in it. This tank is on ADA Amazonia light soil and as you can see we got a lot of shrimps here, a, a lot of babies and very unclear water. And you would ask me why I'm showing this tank to you, why I think that I should show you that doing wrong things can give you a good result. This is because I think that when we need to find a balance when we are keeping the shrimps, we need to find a balance between too much of an upkeep and not enough of an upkeep. This tank also is a proof that keeping shrimps can be, can be done in different ways. Finally, this tank is the proof that maybe, maybe I say maybe because we got another tank precise for that experiment, but maybe the anoxic filtration can work miracles. You need to know that there is only one filter in this tank and this filter is under gravel filter with airstone that wasn't clear for a long time. As you can see, we have a very, very low flow uh, in the filtration. Uh, the water is not going too fast and we've got a deep, deep soil bed in this plastic container. I wasn't clearing the air airstone I don't use the sponge filters, I almost do nothing with this tank. And here you can see how, how does it look. It got a lot of shrimps. I think there are some important reasons and important factors that have made this tank so successful. First of all, I'm using a very good soil, in my opinion one of the best soils that was ever available on the market. The ADA Amazonia Light. This soil tends to keep the pH very low 
even sometimes below 5.5 and it tends to hold this pH for a long time. Another important factor is that if I wasn't doing a lot of water changes, I didn't use the soil that much because I was only adding RO water. The next fact, the next factor is that I feed a very rich diet to my shrimps. I try to feed shrimps two times a day and the amount that shrimps will be able to eat when within one to two hours. And usually I will try to take out the excess food, but normally I can feel the size of the shrimp pack and know how much food should I add to the tank. Another important factor which helped this tank a lot is the amount of plants in the tank, especially the floating plants. You saw that there was a lot of Salvinia natans in the tank and this plant is great for eating NO3. If it's near to the light, if it's got uh, enough NO3, it will multiply as crazy. And in my opinion, the very big reason for low NO3 levels and for very good health of those shrimps is that plant. So connecting all of these factors bring me to very good working tank. This is a very good thing, a, a very big step in trying to develop my shrimp keeping habits. I think that maybe the anoxic, fil anoxic filtration connected uh, with enough of plants and with good shrimp feeding uh, supplementation with different types of foods and foods with high quality can help me to keep so nicely developing shrimp packs. And I'm not sure if you did know, but I've posted a video about Vin shrimps. And although he makes water changes each time a week from 10 to 30% of water changes, he uses under gravel filtration. And the only soil that he uses is ADA Amazonia version one. And I think that this shows the, that maybe this is the way to keep the shrimps. I would like to know if you tried this, those low maintenance tanks, those tanks that didn't get water change each, each week, that didn't have a lot of filtration, didn't have a lot of airflow inside of them. And what results did you get uh, from those types of tank. I'm very interested because a lot of people, including myself, says that filtration is a very important factor of success shrimp tank. I would also say that in most of my tanks with heavy filtration, I will achieve a very decent results. Unfortunately, there are some tanks that will struggle with starting, even though they got a very nice, very strong filtration. So guys, I think this is important to try to develop better ways of shrimp keeping. And if you are interested how different breeders keep their shrimps, you can click on the link that you will see on the screen and see how Vin Shrimp developed his shrimp breeding hobby and the way that he keeps shrimps. So thank you and keep on shrimping.